the gym again. We're gonna get a little nerdy, okay? So we're gonna do some sciencey stuff, but I want you to know that I'm really passionate that you know that you're empowered. So even though I might throw out some big words, I'll explain them to you so that you kind of get it. Um, boy, there's a lesson that I learned, just a little bit of a um, side topic here. And I learned this, unfortunately, in graduate school, and technically I should have learned this in fifth grade, and that's really to never go past a misunderstood word. So if you have youngsters at home, especially grade school, make sure they know that. If you go past a misunderstood word, misunderstood word, you'll lose 70 to 80% of your comprehension for the next five to seven sentences. So remember those times when you read something, you get to the bottom, you didn't even know what you read? You probably wouldn't pass a misunderstood word. So as I give you some words you don't know, which will be obviously misunderstood, I'm gonna explain them. Does that make sense to you, okay? So a little on the nerdy side. First off, I love pregnancy, I love pediatrics. I've been certified with the Webster Technique since 1995, and I'm currently certified with pediatric experience, and I'm also currently certified with the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. In the Pediatric uh, Chiropractic Pediatric Association, you can Google that, and it's um, ICPA, the number four, kids.org. And inside that, you can find a lot of really helpful information on the Webster technique. But on the nerdy side, we're gonna talk about pregnancy, certainly prenatal pregnancy, and how you can have the best birth, best pregnancy that you could ever imagine. If I have the opportunity, I love to talk to a couple before conception. So we do preconception consultations. On this discussion, I explain two words that are really critical. And they're basically what's called the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, okay? The sympathetic is when our body is in protection, and the parasympathetic is when it's in growth, but primarily it's not only in growth, it's in healing and development. So how much do you think a mom needs to be during her entire pregnancy from conception to birth? She needs to be in parasympathetic as much as she possibly can. So let's make sure we understand those words. Parasympathetic is the opposite side of sympathetic. A lot of folks have heard of sympathetic. We simply call that fight or flight. So you're kind of in a fearful state. There's a lot going on. Sympathetic is actually excited in our body when we are fearful. Now fearful really, if you look at the word accurately, it means I just don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Think of a dark alley. I don't know what's down the alley. Think of a new job. I don't know if this job is going to work out. Think of a new relationship. Think of anything that you really are passionate about for one thing, because that always raises the elevation, but you just don't know exactly how it's going to come out. So that is kind of life. That is kind of normal. That is kind of healthy. However, if we have other challenges in our body, either physically, emotionally, or chemically, it can put our state into kind of a low grade or medium grade constant sympathetic tone. And then you have these events in your life where you don't know or are fearful, and then you go into sympathetic way too intense and way too frequent. If a pregnant mom is in high sympathetic tone, your baby will be born different. We have a lot of studies during war. So these could be, you, this could be the most encouraging woman you've ever met in your life, but she's in war. She's in a war zone. So that sympathetic tone is gonna to be elevated way more than it would ever be in, you know, in a normal situation. And so what happens to the babies is they come out literally stronger. They come out looking a little bit more like a warrior ready to go, you know? They, they stand up quicker, they walk faster, and they actually go through the development stages a little quicker. The challenge with that is that all of these milestones that your baby goes through not only have to go in sequence, because it's just how nature made us, but they have to be fully complete before the next one occurs. So think about a brand new baby. What does it really need to do physiologically? It just needs to have a good gut. So what do you think a baby needs when they're first born? They just need a gut. They need the ability to digest and to poop. But that's really it. There's no emotional stability. There's no cognitive stability. There's no real way to do everything else in life. They just need a gut. After gut and the milestones is your immune system. So babies, infants, are more prone for infection because they don't have the immune system. That system has to be fully developed before it goes to the next one, which is things like speech, and then emotions, and then things like cognitive and decision-making, which all the way goes into your mid-20s. 
So if our baby is born in high sympathetic tone, their body is kind of has the gas pedal on. It's just like accelerated. So they're gonna go through their stages, but they're gonna go through them so quick, they're not gonna fully develop. The outcome is many, many children, including myself, it eventually manifests in similar symptoms like ADHD, um, I have better dyslexia, I'm just a hyper kind of personality. So these are when you're born in a high sympathetic tone and your body doesn't fully complete each milestone. So, you know, in neurology, less is more. In life, slow is better. We want to fully develop before we go to whatever next phase we're in. So I want you to be encouraged that we do a lot of work. We use what's called the HRV, which is a neural pulse. It's basically a way of evaluating your sympathetic or parasympathetic tone. We can measure it. It's completely non-invasive, and we can repeat it as many times as we want. It's just one way of measuring your sympathetic or parasympathetic balance. During this time, actually preconception, we also want to look at the male to make sure that their neurology is healthy also. But really, it comes down to mostly mom, you can imagine. Now, I want you to be, I want to be super respectful on this because I'm not a female, that we are all kind of emotionally tied to our environment. So we're going back to that really super optimistic, powerful woman who lives in a war zone. Her environment is still overly overwhelmed. So it's not just women that have a bad attitude or they're angry, and et cetera. Not that, we're not talking about that. We're talking about your environment. So if you work in a high stress job, or even if you watch the news too much, or there's maybe some challenges at home where the that sympathetic, that energy, that stress is too high, this is gonna deplete our, the health of our baby's potential. So we wanna talk about it. And it doesn't mean we have to get to perfect, but if you have a goal of trying to have the healthiest baby you can, at least know what you're looking at. Get, a, get an idea of what may or may not happen for you and for your child. So a little bit later in this video, actually attached to this video, is some explanation on some of this nerdy science from Dr. Tony Evil. He's a friend of mine in Illinois, he's an excellent chiropractor in pediatrics and maternity. And he's even gonna explain what I just talked about from a different perspective. But it's kind of the same information. I just want you to be informed. I want you to have the best opportunity to have the child that you want, not only from conception to prenatal, but certainly to birth, passage, and adolescence. We have a process to help you go through this whole thing. We're here for you. Thank you for your time.